as a kid, have you ever been curious enough to take apart one of your toys to see what's going on inside? In our engineering design classes, we get our students to do that. Not only that, we also guide them to put it back together in a way that it would work even better than its original form. In these design classes, students really have to get their hands dirty because using your hands provides you with another dimension in knowledge acquisition. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the concept of learn by doing, where students experience a deep sense of understanding that only occurs through creating things. This is not a new concept, and we have been doing it for millennia, but with all the modern conveniences that has taken over our life, I think we have lost our innate curiosity to explore and create things. One of the reasons why I became a mechanical engineer is because I was curious about the magic behind machines. I personally feel the work of an engineer is far more exciting than a magician because they are not illusions and we do it for real. But to create an engineer with an innovative mindset is hard work and cannot be done by using conventional education methods. And I have always been fascinated by how institutes like MIT is incorporating learn by doing in delivering their courses which also inspired me to become an educator who make learning fun for our students. Because I truly believe that learning should be fun and definitely not frightening or intimidating. Even though universities like MIT has the financial means to spend large sum of money to delivering such fun and interactive courses, as the educators in the developing world, we are faced with the harsh reality of having very limited budgets and scarcity of academic staff. But as educators, we also have to be creative enough to get around those obstacles and without, be, without staying behind these kind of excuses. Therefore, today, I would like to talk to you about how me and my amazing team incorporate some of those learn by doing concepts into our engineering courses. One of the first design courses in our, in our curriculum start with an exercise called Product Year Down, where we ask students to bring a discarded or broken item to the classroom. And then they will dissect these machines and create pegboards out of it. And we also ask them to explain how all these tiny components come together to solve a problem that the machine intends to solve. Not only that, they also have to find out why the item is broken or discarded, and also we ask them to suggest ways where they can improve it uh, using many different methods. This machine anatomy class seems like a very simple class. But over the years, I have seen how students are getting so, many, so much learning through these experiences. Sometimes they are humbled by how hundreds of items come together to create something as simple as, a, as an alarm clock. And sometimes they are also surprised by how simple some of the consumer electronics can be and even consider developing their own consumer electronics as pet projects. This is where they get some of the very important and deep lessons about system architecture, which they carry forward into their other classes that they, they do in later years. And it helps us to help them think like, start thinking like engineers. In conventional engineering courses, Usually, hands-on design skills are introduced at later years. But with digital revolution, how we experience things have completely changed. And students sometimes prefer to watch someone else's experience on screen rather than creating things using their own hands and tools. 
Therefore, we thought of introducing these skills as early as first semester itself. Well, we have introduced freshman design challenge in the first semester itself under the course engineering mechanics, where students build trebuchets and launchers to achieve a common goal. And in their second semester under manufacturing course, we asked them to build something that is related to their hobby. And students have very creative ideas, and sometimes we see them build, building lightsabers and also building uh, minion themed barbecue grills and many other fun things. And for their design element class, we ask them to build toys. Not only that, we invite school kids to come to those classes and help us evaluate how good their toys are. So these kind of exercises brings out the best in students. And not only that, we maintain a very strict, very strict budget cap for these projects, where our students have to maintain a budget somewhere around $15 to $20. Of course, they are free to use any discarded or recycled materials. And through these kind of competitions, students get a sense of achievement by creating things that work. And not only that, the, all the teamwork that goes into their learning puts the icing on top of their learning experience. And when it comes to their advanced classes, we take them through a very intensive learning experience based on design thinking principles, where students have to find their own problem to solve, and which, which are socially relevant, as well as economically and technically feasible. It all starts with finding a problem to solve. This, this might seem like a very trivial step, but in my experience, this is the most crucial step that determines how novel that innovation is going to be. And we send out our students to various places to observe and find their own problems. And this is why, so, this is why we cannot do socially relevant and good innovations by sitting on our office rooms. And through this experience, we take them from the pro pro problem identification towards the end of the pro project where they, where they are also encouraged to apply for patents. We also go into minor details, such as developing user guides and manufacturing uh, maintenance manuals. To do an innovative research or to do an innovative invention, students need to develop a deep sense of empathy with not only the end users, but also with all the stakeholders involved in the project, starting from the manufacturing team, the sales team, after sales providers, as well as everyone who's involved in product retirement. And this entire course is a very intensive learning experience not only for students, but also for the staff. The amazing learning experience is truly transformational. Over the years, we have seen many success stories, and one of them is here, you can see, as one of our students, Delisha, developing a, a better trolley device for his sick father who was bedridden, and he wanted to make something that relieved his father from the pain he is going through. And this amazing, simple, but ingenious invention not only could win several awards, but also we could apply for a patent and international PCT. This, sh this shows us how st having strong empathy can lead to developing inventions that are really impactful for the society. We have also seen how some of our students creating vegan leather out of invasive plants that not only look like real leather, but also feel like and feel like real leather and has same properties as animal leather. Right now, our, uh, our product design course has found, find a new, found a new purpose to, in, uh, to help the local industries in enhancing those industries. Currently, we are working with Sri Lanka Gem and Jewelry Association to bring about the necessary change that is required in that industry. 
Sri Lanka is famous for its sapphires. And the, and the craftsmanship of laboratories in Sri Lanka is known around the world. But the unfortunate and these skillful uh, craftsmen can transform a rough stone into a fine faceted gemstone that can go into the crowns of royalty as well as the jewelry of celebrities. But the sad thing is, over the years, there's a, there's a large decline in the number of laboratories in Sri Lanka, mainly due to the fact that technology has not changed in this industry for more than 50 years. Once we got to know about this problem through an expert in the industry, we immediately started working on it. Our team and also all the students went on a number of field visits to gems, uh, to gem mines, to laboratories, as well as gem markets and gem stores to find out what are the difficulties that are faced by this industry. And currently, we are working on these 17 projects. We are still in the midway of our journey, but with the passionate team we are having, we are hopeful about what's, com what's coming in the future. I did my graduate studies in Japan, Tokyo, where I lived for about seven years. Every year during spring, Japanese would put up these koi fish lanterns for their children's day celebrations. Because they believe, unlike other fish, koi fish usually swim upstream. Just like that, we need people who are brave enough, who are courageous enough to, to swim upstream to bring about the change that we need in this world. Therefore, as educators, let us carefully nurture and foster those individuals who can creatively contribute to our society. Thank you.